Well, hello and welcome to another episode of More Perfect Marketing. It's David Baer here. Not too long ago, I was at a local uh, Chamber of Commerce event, and I was chatting with a, a guy who owned a um, uh, contracting business. I can't remember what it was, uh, like a sash and cord window repair replacement business. And I, I told him about a problem I was having, so he gave me his card. Now, there were two problems in this scenario. He hands off his card, and he had a Gmail address on the card. And you know, that's not the worst sin in the world. Um, but then he says to me, by the way, if you go to my website, it doesn't look really good. My apologies. But, you know, we didn't really know what we were doing, and we didn't have time to really do anything better. So I'm sorry. Now, I don't work in the website building world uh, all that often, but today's guest does. And I imagine this is a variation on a conversation or a theme that she hears quite often. And so I want to welcome Lindy Nowak to our conversation today because I look at a lot of websites and while they look a heck of a lot better the, these days than they did when we first uh, had websites you know, enter our world and, and the business world in general, there's a lot of problems with with what people do to represent their business online. And uh, hopefully we'll get some pointers today about how to avoid some of those bad habits that so many uh, websites have uh, have presented to us in, in, in the small business world and um, perhaps some other insights as well. Wendy, welcome. Thank you so much for having me, David. Great to be here. Yeah. So I, I saw your reaction when I started telling that story. Um, how how often does something like that cross y your path? Let's just say this. Right below the header on our website, there's a title that says, it's a question, or I'm sorry, it's a, it, it tells people basically mm -hmm. like, stop apologizing for your website. Yeah. We're here to help. <laughs> and it's literally our website. So when you said that, that's when I started laughing because it's true. It, it, it happens all of the time. We're all guilty for it, right? We all let our websites sit and get old. And then one day we're like, oh my gosh, yeah. my website needs help. It is so old. It is so ugly. I'm embarrassed by it. Where do I turn? And I want it done quickly. I, I remember years ago, I started building websites for various employers as, as the marketing person on the team. I was tasked with this and I didn't know what the heck I was doing. But thankfully, and, and this was long before I got to understand how to code, which isn't necessary these days anymore, um, and long before I got comfortable in the WordPress environment, which became a very popular and very common platform for websites, I was using sort of plug and play, do it yourself um, uh, sites. And then I, you know, built out these things that were unwieldy to get through. Uh, on on the back end, confusing, you know, for me as as the person who was putting the thing together. And then when I hit either a design problem or I just wanted to put certain things like an image or words in a certain place and I couldn't make it do that, I was incredibly frustrated. And I see that on the front end of so many websites these days. I like I look at they're like, why is that there? Or, you know, why do why is there this giant big blank space? And I imagine that's the type of thing that, you know, a lot of people kind of deal with, well, it's good enough. Exactly. <laughs> and you do, I know, again, we hear that a lot because yeah. it's, it's so time consuming to design your own website, especially as business owners, we get in our own way. And then we really start to nitpick at the content and we sit there and then we end up basically just procrastinating the whole thing. Or we say, you know what, good enough. Let's just get it up and forget about it. Cause it's really easy to do that because you don't have to look at it every day. But what we don't realize is that people who are shopping around are going to your website. They're looking for website is confirmation, right? Especially in the service industries. So being very aware that, you know, yes, anyone can just go in and build their own website, but what is the website there to do? It's there to help people make a decision and to make a decision really quick. And that's your sales tool. That's your marketing tool. If you're using, let's say you're using social media, LinkedIn, for example, you get on a LinkedIn page and it's just filled with all kinds of crazy content. You don't know where to look. You're kind of skimming it, seeing what this company's about or this individual business owner. All right. I want to know more. So where do I go? 
is the website hooked up to the LinkedIn account? Hopefully it is. When they get there, are you proud of it? Do you feel confident about your website that people, the right people through your messaging and design are going to take that action to get a hold of you? Mm -hmm. So you, you talked about the purpose of the website a little bit and the kind of convenience of being able to help or, or that it that it's supporting a process. Um, I think in, in the marketing world, and, and I'm sure that you 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 know of these guys, or maybe you even practice this this approach, um, there are philosophical approaches to building out websites, right? The, one of the most popular ones that we hear in the marketing world is the Don Miller's uh, story brand, right, approach, where there's a structure to the website should be conveying certain things to a certain audience uh, in a certain order to help them get through a process. I'm curious to hear a little bit about your philosophical approach to, to web design. It's almost identical to Donald Miller's. Um, when I started up in a day, that was the first book I read. I, we knew what we were doing when it came to designing websites, but when up in a day was born, we knew that we had to be very strategic because we work so fast and be able to create frameworks for certain industry sectors that made sense for them, but also of course, for your audience. And I love, uh, I also read Marketing Made Simple, which is also mm -hmm. is Don, Donald Miller's book. And they touch on, they touch a lot on the website framework and it works. It's just a, an approach to into which people get on websites, desktop and mobile, and how they move around the site. It's really about modern day user experience. And uh, one of the services that we offer are uh, website reviews. For people, people who are just like not quite sure if we're a right fit or just not quite sure really what's wrong with their website. Why are people not clicking and contacting me? So what we do is we go in there and, and we will like review their site for them. And um, so a lot of the times we'll point out like, you know, this is like how it should structure, like from a user experience. And I always say, in today's world, everybody's moving so fast. We're all moving fast in the Western world and we're on our phones, we're on social media, we're on websites and what are we doing? We're skimming, we're going really fast, we're scrolling even on desktop. And so what are we looking for? We're looking for those key phrases, those key words that stand out to us, that answer our problem, that something that we relate to, be it an image or a title, and that's when we stop. So when it comes to the website, right? You don't want to have to ask people to click all over and try to find what they need. You want to capture them at the top of the page uh, before they even hit the footer. Hmm. You used the word framework a couple of times there. And and I want you to talk a little bit more about that because the, the first thing that well, again, I, I, I've never offered the service of designing websites for people, although people have hired me to do this because I, I'm comfortable in that space when they're not. And a lot of the things that get marketed to those of us who are service providers are done for you or nearly done for you templates. And I want to I want to make a, a clear distinction between those two things, because when you use the word framework, you were talking about something quite different that I think that businesses should think about. You know, I'm not getting a website from somebody who is giving the same site and content and look and feel to somebody else, but framework is different. Exactly. I'm so glad you brought that up. When I'm talking about framework, I'm talking about user experience. So the sections on your website with content, that is the framework. So whatever, and, and modern, like, I love back up a little bit. So when I talk about like the modern day in which people surf the web and get on websites, um, typically what is proves to be the most successful in terms of like service industries is that you have a beautiful header image, you have a clear headline descriptor speaking directly to your audience and in different ways, then you move down the page it's about your company opening remarks. And then you could even like point out the pain points of your typical clients or customers, or you just talk about um, how you understand what they go through. And then you introduce your services, take them to the services page. And then everything else below that is what 
Donald Miller even calls like jargon. So your mm-hmm. testimonials, like everything that's like the trusted sources um, and then anything else you want to put images, et cetera, more copy. Um, so that's what I mean by framework, like the modern user experience when somebody gets on a website and what they expect to find. Yeah. So, all right. I want to, I want to shift direction for a couple of minutes here and then we'll, we'll get back to sort of what what makes for a a useful um uh content on a website uh the the platform behind the website that sort of thing but i i want to talk a little bit about how you got to where you where you are these days because you did didn't necessarily start off in the in the marketing and creative world building websites for small business in fact you you were working at a sort of extreme opposite end of the industry can can you share a little bit about that and then how did this transition end up happening i started my career in corporate corporate for many many years 12 years i was in new york i worked for very large companies um starting graphic design and moved into marketing uh worked at on the brand side at l'oreal for many years Um, I actually moved to Brazil to Rio de Janeiro and worked for an agency on their L'Oreal account. So that was super fun. Uh, And then when I moved back to New York, I found myself in publishing. And that's really where the love and passion for helping other businesses from a marketing and sales standpoint really came into fruition because I started as a creative director on the marketing and sales side of of magazines, basically. Mm -hmm. So that entailed a lot of 360 uh, marketing from, you know, in book, from print, Mm -hmm. all the way to digital, to events, this whole kind of like packaging up these sponsorships, if you will, and advertising um, uh, and promotional materials. So so that was kind of where I found myself in marketing. Um, And then I got a great opportunity to move to Miami uh, with my husband. I've always wanted to live here. This is where we uh, started up in a day. And before up in a day, I started this little digital marketing agency. I had did a lot of branding. Uh, we did a lot of websites, but like bigger websites. We did Shopify, big Squarespace sites. We didn't do any WordPress at the time, um, just by nature of um, of WordPress itself with the mm-hmm. user experience on, you know, once we hand it off. So um, what was happening was, we started getting all of these small businesses and solopreneurs, people just starting their businesses. And they were coming to us absolutely desperate for website help. They either got burned because they spent $10,000 on a WordPress site that they don't even know how to use Mm -hmm. or it's 10 years old. They don't even know how to get in their website developer disappeared. We hear that a lot. Uh, Their cousin designed their website. (laughs) They tried to design their website and all. And, what, you know, when you're setting up a new business, I, I, I see this a lot, like uh, people will put their website on, like they'll procrastinate their website. And then all of a sudden they have this business, but no website. And they're like, oh my gosh, I need to get this done. Um, and so, you know, we saw, I saw this huge gap in the market. Like we were just, were not able to help these people just because of the nature of our margins and their price points. Yeah. And at the same time, I had all, I was started thinking about this dream that I had of creating a new uh, productized service to the new to market. Mm-hmm. And I said I was watching a webinar one day, and I started thinking, you know, oh man, well, what do we? What do I love doing? I love building. You know, uh, we love building websites. Um, love talking to people. Love helping people. Um, what are we really good at? Well, we're really good at building websites in Squarespace. In fact, we build websites really fast because we know the platform like the back of our hand. Oh my gosh, we can actually help these small businesses, you know, and then all of a sudden the juices are flowing, the gears are moving. And, you know, it was just like the the sun came out and it was like, I got it. We're going to help these small business owners and get them up and running with really great online presences. And we're going to do it quickly and we're going to, we can do it in a day. And, you know, yes, up in a day, we can build these websites fast. Like sometimes we'll get tech startups coming to us and they'll, they'll literally be like, um, we're in our series B funding. We don't have a website. Can we, we get it in two days? 
And of course, yeah, we can obviously do that. We have a systems, the systems and the processes in place, ready to go, ready to, to deploy. But other people come to us and they'll say, hey, you know, I really want to work with you. Um, I'm still building out my business. It's launching in September. Can I get the website up in, by August 28th? And then that gives them enough time to gather their content, everything that they want on the site, have a kickoff call with us, knowing that once, you know, that their website's literally going to be done on August 28th. So, yeah. So it was really just filling the gap of, you know, a hole in the market that I saw. And it's been extremely you know, gratifying. One of the things, you know, when I set up up in a day, I was like, this is going to be so easy because we're so turnkey and very transactional, but it's so much more than that. Like it's, it's really, you know, astounding to see with so many websites and clients in our belt, like how many people we've helped. Like when we show the websites to our clients for the first time, people are like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe what I'm seeing. Like this is exactly yeah. what I wanted because our clientele, they're not on the creative side, right? They're busy business owners who are stressed out, working, like trying to work on the business, but sometimes stuck in the business. And they have so many other things to worry about than nitpicking at their website. That was the other thing that I found out, like, you know, websites are, are strategic tools that need to really be thought out from um, a standpoint of your business. Like, you know, who are your clients, who are your customers? How do you really want them to contact you? Um, what is the messaging in which we grab them? And then how do we implement that with really awesome design? So when you know, it's hard to be a really good marketer and a really good designer and a really good website developer and a really good business owner. It's like that all that together just does not mix. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, you, you mentioned the the reaction that people have. And I, and I love the very first testimonial that shows up when when you load the website is from a guy named Matt Roberts, who uh, <laughs> whose whose quote is. OMG. Yes, yes, and yes, you nailed it. And and I uh, so you know, yes, you do get reactions like that, but I I want to actually speak to the types of testimonials that I'm looking at on your website right now because one of the things that I I've heard you talk about in terms of it being, you know, a, a strategic marketing tool and some of the things that you've said the website needs to do, you do really well on your own website because effective testimonials come from people who reflect the people you're trying to appeal to. And as I scroll through the the various clients you've helped, there's a clear theme in terms of type of entrepreneurs, size of business, um, you know, sophistication of business in an area that is not necessarily technical that I think um, really speaks to what you're trying to um, you know get across to somebody who's visiting the site. And I think obviously you're demonstrating your capabilities quite well on your own site as a result. Yeah, thank you. Um, I appreciate that. You know, we're really meant for one to maybe 10 person shops, but typically the people that come to us are the actual business owners um, ready to go. Yeah. Um, curious and just like, how can you help me? And those are typically one to three people shops. Um, but, you know, we'll work across lots of industries. Matt, for example, the OMG guy, he's a photographer mm -hmm. um, and he's building out his business um, solely just to be a photographer. He has another uh, job on the side. So, you know, for that testimonial to come through, that to me was just demonstrating the fact that like we just helped him to make that next step away from his day job and into his passion. Yeah. That's brilliant. I, I, I love it. The, okay. So I, I'm curious a little bit of your backstory, you know, involved these different activities that you were doing with large organizations when I think it was uh, entertainment weekly where you were talking about, you know, serving clients who were then, you know, developing materials for them. Was that, was that during that period of time? I'm curious what all of that has helped inform in the work that you're doing with your current clients, if at all. I mean, obviously, you know, there's there could be lots of different things from the design, you know, aesthetic to maybe some of the workflow stuff. And I want to get to that workflow stuff because I love the the words that you used a few minutes ago, systems and processes. So 
Yeah, I, I would say that the past experiences at Entertainment Weekly, Women's Health, uh, I was at Bon Appetit for a short stint, um, really in terms of, you know, how it affected and even like propelled me to be where I am today. Um, I think it's really managing teams. I was managing really big teams mm. and what was happening is the other publications would get word of what I was doing. I would basically, and then try to poach me <laughs> because I would go into organizations that didn't have support for their creative departments. Um, and creative departments in corporate sometimes can be the, you know, bottom of, well, I guess I would be top uh, of the, of the totem poles, right. They're mm -hmm. kind of like always the last to can be, and I shouldn't just be totally straight up on that, but they tend to just like lack the support that they need because they're being, you know, asked to, <laughs> you know, projects come through, mm -hmm. they start at the top and then they go into the, you, let's say they go into publishers to so the sales yep. teams and then to the marketing teams. And then all of a sudden time's running out and these creative departments need to execute really yep. fast. And so I guess the, the speed in which, um, we were able, I was able to go in and it like help create systems and processes for these departments, but also support them as a leader um, and kind of be their buffer against the other departments and create a very, very happy work environment was what I really enjoyed doing. Um, so that systems, the processes, the management, um, the marketing uh, roles, like really being able to take on different types of clients and help them envision where their brand could be, where their business could be by working with us yeah. um, and how we can help them do that. So I would say those three things uh, really help to take me to an entrepreneurial role, to be honest, and to create this business and be very confident about that I can do this. Um, so I, yeah, that was a really good question. I never thought about it that way. So thanks. It, it's interesting <laughs> that, you know, when, when you're a leader within an organization, you don't have the pressures or concerns of like making sure that the money's coming in, right? You're just, you're, you're an employee and <laughs> that part is taken care of. True. So you've, you've taken your, you know, organized or, um, uh, your, your capability to be a leader and somebody who's a, you know, a skillful project manager and applying it to running the business, but then you got to figure out, all right, well now where do I find the business? Where do I get the clients? And obviously starting up, it's a much bigger challenge than once you're now, you know, established and and have uh, a client base and and those you're serving and and can, you know, benefit from referrals, et cetera. But I'm, I'm curious, you know, what that transition was like when you opened the doors, you know, once, once you moved down to Florida. Well, the sales part is something that I obviously did not come to the table with. And when I started up in a day, I was like, oh my gosh, people are going to come left and right. They're going to love this idea. So many people need it. And I remember our first month was, was really good. I mean, we sold four sites. So it's like one a week. And then it just got dead silent. <laughs> I was like, okay, well, time to put the sales hat on. How do we do this? And then we bootstrapped it the whole way. And it was a huge learning curve. And I had a lot of help along the way. Luckily, my husband uh, started, uh, he started training to become a business coach. And that's where co the coaching element of the business really came in as a factor, a huge factor for our business. Yeah. I, I, I can't say that I would even like consider hiring a coach just by nature of not realizing that I needed one. Um, and I've had several coaches, sales coaches, marketing coaches, business growth coaches. I have a new coach right now. I, it's just been instrumental to the business and to my peace of mind too, because I am, you know, as a business owners, we, we wear a lot of hats and there are a lot of, and we have to do that for a long time. Even the stuff that we don't like doing, we have to learn how to do it. You know, we have to prove that the product works. We have to prove that our price point works. We have to prove that we know who we love working with and who we would, would love working with. And so all of those things are all, you know, tied to time and letting the business evolve and making sure you're having a good time while doing it. Um, and then hopefully eventually you realize what you don't like doing and you have enough money in the bank that you can hire someone to take on those roles that 
are so much better than you can do. We just had a role uh, just recently. I had like a huge personal win for the business and myself. I was at a point where there's a, you know, pivotal, 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 excuse me, role in the company that we really, really needed. And finally I was able to find that person and I can't wait to see where the business goes from here. So it's so much fun. It's fun creating something new. It's yeah. stressful, but it's fun. Well, I think that the more of the, the, you know, more years you have under the belt in, in terms of running the business, the, the more you have the opportunity to support your clients with a broader perspective, right? That you've done, you've done this, you've been through this, you've seen other clients you've served in similar situations to them, right? Now, now you can start taking on a, a role that is not just where your website design and, and build company, right? But that you have additional um, resources to provide them in terms of knowledge and experience. Uh, so th there's a, there's a question related to all of this, which is you're working with a business that's either replacing something that already exists that wasn't very good, or it's the very first website presence that they have. And beyond the website, there's other brand related or marketing related things that they're likely doing. And I'm curious sort of what role that plays in the work that you do, whether it's sort of separate, not, not your, you know, um, not your area, not your responsibility, or do you help them sort of plan and coordinate that so that they have a broader perspective of what the, the um, mechanism of the website is actually, you know, doing as part of the bigger picture of the business? Yes, exactly. Now I have this great website up. Now what? How do I get people to come to it? The first thing we, when I, so as of late, we only do the websites and that's it. And then we have articles in our blog that can help them to figure out like how to boost their SEO, how to get people to the site. And, you know, like the time thing, you start learning your customers, you start learning what they're missing. You start learning what they need. You don't want to just leave them high and dry. And we don't. Um, so the first thing I started doing is I started offering my own like consults on the side as a, mm -hmm. as a consultant to these yeah. small businesses to help them. But then I realized, you know, okay, there's another hat that I'm wearing. That's a lot of time. Um, it's super fun because of course, you know, you want to dive in and help people in their business and all mm -hmm. that good stuff. But um, I, I am not the business. The business is the up in a day business. And so how does up in a day um, serve these clients past the website? So um, to come, we are introducing new services um, that will help people's online presence after mm -hmm. the website build out. So you can, you know, maybe it's, it, I don't want to give too much away, but of course it's going to obviously be in the social s sector. Uh, we're still figuring out those like nitty gritty details, um, yeah. so social sector, um, some maybe AI components that thing that can help them like some automations that we can add to their site that help them to capture the audience faster. So little, like little things that we can offer to really help them because at the end of the day, we really just want to see our clients succeed. Yeah, totally. And and I, I like the way that you're thinking about kind of the next thing something we talk about on the on the show a lot um is the importance of narrowness and specificity in who you're serving because then you can add additional services or products that speak to the vast majority of them and so this is you know whatever that next step is or the next several offerings that you build out you've heard from them this is this is the next thing that we need and many of them all need the same thing so that i th i think that's very smart in in the way that you're thinking about this that's right. Thank you very much. So well, listen, we're close to out of time, but I want to make sure that folks know you, you've been saying um, up in a day, up in a day, but we haven't actually introduced what the business is or where they can find it. So in the last minute or, or, or so, I want to give you the opportunity to give a little bit more detail about the business and where they can learn more about uh, up in a day websites. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. We've just been talking about up in a day and websites, but what do we really do? <laughs> Uh, so, so, so we basically, um, in a nutshell, we build really great high impact website for confirmations, uh, websites for small business owners, solopreneurs, 
entrepreneurs, um, people, seasoned business owners, brand new business owners. And we have a process that makes it super, super easy for our clients so they can just focus on their business. They leave the website to us, knowing that when they review, they're going to be up and running in no time. So that's what we do. Um, and they can find us at upinadaywebsites.com. Excellent. So up in a day websites, plural.com. And it will actually redirect to the real website, but we're not going to give that one away. You have to <laughs> discover where it redirects for yourself. Hey, Lindy Nowak, this has been a fabulous conversation. I really appreciate you making the time to chat with me. Yeah, same here. I really enjoyed it. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Indeed. Folks, you have been listening to more Perfect Marketing. If there's somebody you know who can benefit from listening to this conversation, and I'm pretty sure you do know someone, please share it with them. Until next time, my name is David Baer. We'll see you back here again soon. Bye-bye.